everyone makes money now everyone makes great games so yeah that's my answer yeah Everyone loses money as well. Oh yeah, <laughs> so, true. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, no, don't sound so negative. Oh yeah, right. Re- realist, realist. Yeah, yeah. Really Half empty. Yeah. Okay. So I'm Juan Hazmer, uh, founder, CEO, and game director at Metronomic. Hi there. So I'm Gerald Sung. I'm the CG director of Metronomic, as well as the co-founder of Ten Ten Studios. I see, okay, so uh, the reason why the metronome was chosen was a few things. One of them is uh, company culture, where we create the game at a steady pace once a year, and also they come at a steady eight hours per day, every day, no OT, whatever. But that's about the company. But about the game itself, um, the game is called No Straight Roads, and it's going to be like a game, action game that's based on rhythm, but uh, it's not a rhythm game, because I know ryth- rhythm games have a very... Um, you know, limited uh, target audience. So I want to make sure that all gamers are able to play this game. But music will be the centric part of the game. Now, the reason why we do that is because everyone loves music, right? But I know not everyone loves, uh, not everyone can play music in- music instruments. So um, I want to make a game where you use your musical instinct to play the game. Like for example, like when you listen to a radio in the car and then you know you have your favorite song on, you know that the chorus is going to come in four beats, right? And a lot of people know this. Even if, they, if, you, even if you don't know the song, sometimes you can even uh, predict that will happen, right? So we will use that instinct and make it uh, part of the vital game design in No Straight Road. So you know that when four beats are com- is coming, then okay, then you know that something is going to come, basically. And that's the main game design of No Straight Road. Hmm. Oh, yeah, it does. Um, so my biggest challenge would be to try and flesh out what Hazmir has just talked about in terms of movement, rhythm. Unfortunately, all of those things are using your ears <laughs> or your instinct. And what we're, I'm trying to do is work with the art director. We have a really crazy art director who's super talented and also a really talented concert artist. And they create these beautiful pictures. And so my task is to translate that into something that we could see in game, that we could experience in game visually a little bit more tactile than just a 2D image. Yeah, I mean, seriously, FF15 had really good dynamic music, but I believe that we can challenge that further because we have the same guy who was working for as a mixing engineer for Final Fantasy XV, and that is Falk. We're having him on board as well for our game. And our game has a lot to do with the battle of genres, like rock versus EDM kind of thing. So in order for you to be able to, to tell that uh, who is in charge of the space now, right? we need a lot of dynamic music involved. And yeah, it's, it, even during battle, you can feel the seamless transformation from rock to EDM and back again. So a lot of dynamic music will be in our game. Exactly, and it's the same as uh, No Straight Roads as well, but it will, uh, we will have much more dynamic music, not just for the purpose of telling you what is the atmosphere of the game, yeah. but it's very vital to the game design as well. As I mentioned just now, you know, when you listen to the music, you know something is coming. So it is really, really a core uh, portion of the game design. Everything is, revolves around dynamic music and music uh, theories in general. Right, okay, I guess we both can come up with two different answers, yeah. So, yeah. but okay, I'll come up with my, my answer first. So I think we have a lot of good talents here in Malaysia, and they have skills um, in universities or colleges, usually they teach them, you know, how to use, let's say, Unity, how to use Maya, ZBrush, or whatever. But yeah, I think one of the biggest challenge we have in Malaysia is um, we need good producers and directors, because we have a lot of these skills here, but, uh, you know, they lack direction, you know? And what I mean by direction is that um, it's not whether they can manage the team or not. We have a lot of those as well, but I think the more important thing is, do we have a producer that can take this Malaysian IP and compare it really with Call of Duty or, you know, there's really, really big IPs out there. Can Malaysia's IP stand out above them? You know, we need someone who can think like that. And, and that's how we can optimize the skills that we have in Malaysia to achieve that. Right, then we can create a more, you know, more dreamers in Malaysia as well. Not just you know factory workers. Or I need to create 
I need to make a game for this company. So I use Maya, you know, not only that, we have to think beyond that. And we have to really make sure that, you know, we are comparable, even we can beat the world in general. And the other thing is, I think a lot of, this is, for, this is a very personal thing for me, but I believe that cultures, I think culture is one of the biggest weapon that a Malaysian has. And I think a lot of people do not realize that, right? They either go through two things. Either one is, um, they're not proud of their culture at all, so they will create something totally different, like Japanese style uh, anime, anime uh, art direction, for example. Or we have the second one, which sometimes is the worst one, which is um, they are too proud of their culture. So they think that their next chongkak game will be the biggest game ever in the world. And I think that is also something that is, you know, it's good to realize your culture, but you have to understand also that it has to be relevant or else you cannot make it big, right? That's my answer. So, because um, I've been working in outsource for quite a bit of my time, um, I, I think like the, the my biggest understanding of why we're we're at the stage we are now is because that we our business started out doing outsource. Um, if you compare like the CG or game development in US, for example, they started developing games, so they just had more experience doing it and making sufficient mistakes over time. Um, but I'm really hopeful because right now we, we are actually extremely efficient with outsource. We're very good at it and, and we're starting to make a U-turn back to development. And I think it's just more of a cycle because I've worked with um, a foreign outsource like in the West. They're, they're not as efficient as Asia in terms of how they manage outsource. So I think it's for the same reason, they just don't have the same experience that we do. So in my understanding, if, if you give it enough time, if everyone's aligned on the same page, um, if everyone has a similar passion, wanting to create your own voice, to say, like it's it's probably gonna turn around pretty quick. Mm. I, I'm sorry to say, but I I don't think at all about indies or AAA anymore. Seriously, the thin is really uh, the, the, sorry, the line is really blurring, really fast. Yeah, and not only that, I mean, I think the idea is that you have to have an idea for a game and then adapt it to the scale that you want, you know? Which is why I might sound like a broken record to a lot of people, but um, I really care a lot about user experience. So user experience is, you know, the emotional context of the gameplay, right? Or the art, the story, whatever. And usually user, in user experience, you do not define the genre, or you, do, you also do not define the, um, the medium either. So it could be a small, simple mobile game all the way to a triple A title, you know? So which is why it's very important for you to think about the user experience first. Then only you adapt it to whatever money that you have, you know? So because of that, I think, you know, whether to categorize it as triple A or, or indies or whatever, is not very important. First of all, all indies, all triple A titles have the same um, distributor now. They have Steam, right? They also have PSN. So it's just a matter of experience and the number of people, right? So. I think you shouldn't care too much about which category you go into because everyone makes money now, everyone makes great games. So, yeah, that's my answer. Yeah. I think everyone loses money as well. Oh, yeah. True. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like. <laughs> oh, no, don't sound so oh, yeah. Right. Re realist, realist. Yeah, yeah. Realist. Half empty. Yeah. <laughs> Um, my, my opinion for, it's a really good question actually, like you have that triple A gap and then something that's done in someone's backyard. Um, I, I like to look at film productions because it echoes the same thing. Mm -hmm. You have massive blockbusters that cost like 150, 200 million dollars to make and then you have something that was filmed, you know, through an iPhone. Um, so I guess what Haas is trying to say with user experience, you could say with film is about the story, right? Like what are you trying to say? Um, the, the recent film uh, by Jordan Peele, you know, Get Out was a low budget and it was an Oscar as well, right? Yeah. Um, so I think it echoes back like what if you're making a product, you, you have to just service the market that wants to buy that product. Whether you spend X amount of dollars or not is, is irrelevant at that point. Yeah. <laughs> Right here. <laughs> 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 I kick it around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> well, um, for me, is number one is definitely the um, the don't have the fear to fail. Basically, you know, because um, you have to prove yourself. You know, I mean, you know, so a lot of people, especially when I left for Japan last time, like in 2008, so many people blame the government for not supporting them and all that stuff. But then why would the government support you if you don't prove yourself? Right? So, and then some people say, no, no, but I don't have enough money, so I can't fail. I, I don't want to fail. And, you know, I think people are too scared to fail. That's number one. But the other half is, of course, um, you, you have to overcome that fear of failing by, uh, you know, prototyping your work every so often, you know. Don't just think about an idea. An idea is very cheap nowadays, you know. Don't think of an idea for one year and then that's it. Just when you have an idea, just come up with a simple game. There's so many ways to make a game now. You know, just make it in one month and then prove it. We're doing the same thing in Metronomic as well, right? We're trying to, every two weeks, we come up with a lot of deliverables, del tangible deliverables that you can actually see, you know? That will give confidence to the team as well and to me as well that the game will be fun. But it's still not there yet. We still have to make a prototype. We still need to have the controller in our hands. So yeah, but do not fear of going the, of going there in the fifth. Don't be afraid of standing up, falling down, standing up again, falling down again, standing up. Yeah, I think that's for me was my secret sauce. Even the secret sauce for me entering Square Enix in the first place. Yeah, I mean a Malaysian entering Square Enix, right? What are the chances? So yeah, yeah it's like. Alfred said to Bruce, right? Why oh, yeah, do we fall yeah. faster, Bruce? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true, true. To pick ourselves up. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that uh, the secret sauce would be uh, perspiration. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think like the, the, the sweat that you accumulate, you have to do something to accumulate sweat. That's the thing, you have to make action. Um, and like what, ha I'm echoing what Hazmir is saying, but you have to try. Um, it's never been easier to try and if you try long enough and you sweat hard enough like the essence of whatever you create that will be the sauce I suppose uh, if we, because if you don't start that's like the worst case scenario if you don't try <laughs> yeah you have to do something yeah yep, that's about it. is that good? Okay. There we go. Yeah, Sweet. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, man. No problem. No problem. Shit, man. I gotta work on this. <laughs>